In the previous video, we have focused on naming your layers in Figma and how to use the powerful Figma bulk rename feature. And in this video, we're going to go over when and how you should organize your objects into a component and how you can set up a component that is easy to use across your website and unifies all of these objects within a single place where it's easy to edit and manage. So components uh, are best used when there is something that repeats across your project. By the way, if you wanna go over absolute basics of components, make sure to check out my channel. I have multiple videos on components. It's a very important concept to understand in Figma. So definitely, if you're confused about what components are, make sure to watch these videos. With that being said, components are objects that tend to repeat across your project, right? So this, like person photos, are a typical example of that. You get multiple people, you get multiple sizes, and in each of these cases, all these people are the same, right? Person five is still person five across all sizes, but all these share a property, which is basically being a photo of a person. So imagine you like used, for example, this person, this big photo of a person uh, on multiple pages, right? Let's pretend this is multiple pages. Then you wanna, for example, change the photo, like move it to the left a little, you know, modify it somehow. Uh, you'd go have to go through each of these and then also let's say you wanna replace this with a smaller version. You then have to copy this uh, across your pages and then replace this object with the smaller object. It's just a lot of work, a lot of edits and a lot of different states to manage. So what you wanna do is basically create a component, one single component from all of this, or at least that's what I do. So I'm gonna select all of these photos and then go to this menu and create a component set. So this is gonna create a one single component that I'm gonna name, you can also use the command R shortcut to rename this to customer photo, right? And now I have a bunch of variants. I have a property called property one that has a lot of values where all of these different people are specified, right? People and sizes. So basically what you wanna do is think of categories for each of these. So there is like one category, there is a person, right? We have this guy that is represented across three photos, across three sizes. Then we have this guy and then we have this woman. So all of these people are basically, that's, that's one property, right? So you could create a property called person, right? Property called person. And then you could assign values to this property. You could, for example, change, or let's just create a new one. So plus new property person, and then value is gonna be default, is gonna be just default. I can select one person and assign a value to this property, right? So we have a property called person and this person is person number five, right? So person number five. Now we select person number four across all these sizes and assign the property value two, four, that's person number four. Similarly, person number three and then person number two and one. So now when we select this one instance, you can see that the properties and values of this variant are conflicting, change the applied values on this variant to resolve this. So basically we have created a component variant, three variants that completely share the properties. So Figma doesn't know when you say person number five, if you mean this specific version or this version or this version, right? Figma doesn't know. So we have to specify another property and that's gonna be size. So I'm gonna create a new property, variant property, and this one is, this one is gonna be called size. And we wanna select all these small photos and then specify that the size is small, right? So you, you get a mixed value in terms of person, but all these photos share the size property of small. I can also select this and on size, I can go to default. I can keep that at default, but for the bigger ones, I can select all of these and in size, I can specify big. So this ensures that when I now use an instance of this component, I can select the size and the person separately, right? So I can go to person four or two and size is gonna be big, right? So if you get like multiple instances of this, this 
can become really hard to manage if you get like different people across different sizes. So for example, let's say that we wanna change all of these to the small size, but we wanna keep the people, right? And in the first case, we'd have to just go one by one, but now we can just change simply the size, change the size to small. And I can also, for example, create an auto layout to really organize this better. And this is all nicely organized. So this is a very powerful feature. And then of course, of course, we can change it back to big, for example. Of course, we can now change this person, the photo of this person, and it's gonna be updated across all these instances as components normally do. Another thing we could do is organize these a little bit better. So we can see that when we select the variant property of a person, these numbers go from one, five, four, let's just switch these around. So we wanna go from one to two, three, four, and five like this. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five. And then in terms of size, we wanna go default or just small default big. So this ensures that the order of these numbers in this menu is gonna be as expected. Number one goes first, number five goes last. So yeah, this is how you can organize your component variants to be really, really easy to navigate and then you can manage these states really easily. And mainly, the main thing is you can do all of this from a single place no matter how many instances of these photos you use across your pages. When I change the big version of person number one, it's being updated everywhere. So that's one of the ways you can organize your components. Every time there's something that repeats across your project, you wanna think about using components. This is a very powerful feature, definitely useful. I use it all the time and I think you should too if you wanna save time. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, leave a like if you found this video useful. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to design websites in Figma, there is a playlist on my channel where it's completely free, where we go from scratch and build all these pages from scratch in Figma and create a simple design system for our website. So if you wanna learn how to design this, all of this step-by-step, step, go and check out my playlist on designing a website in Figma. Hope you learned something new. Hope you learned something useful. If you did, I would appreciate you leaving a like. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.